Hey guys, it's me, Steph. I, um, yeah. How are you guys? Comment down below how you guys are, and don't forget to hit subscribe while you're down there. Um, I've tracked in the video today, so that's exciting. Can't really see him because he's black and dark, so he blends in to my dark shirt, but he's here. <laughs> um, I wanted to talk to you guys. I just got done watching a TED Talk. Um, I can link it down below. That was really informative, and I think I've watched it once before, but I watched it again, and so I thought I'd do kind of a reaction video to it. Um, the video was about um, the whole inspiration point thing that I've talked about before, which is just like those signs that you see with a bunch of able-bodied people around somebody in a wheelchair being like, kumbaya! Um, and pretty much people with disabilities being objectified for their bodies for the inspiration of others. So that's, and that's what inspiration porn is. And this woman dissected that a little bit and it was a really great TED talk and so I wanted to talk about um, living as a person with disabilities that <clears throat> are not always visible or are completely invisible. So I've kind of gone through all of the spectrums of disability. Um, when I was little, up to the age of five, I was in a full body cast from here to my ankles. It was purple. I kind of loved it. I kind of, it was actually, it was really rough. But I was, I did that six months on, six months off until I was five, from 18 months until I was five. And so in that time, I was treated differently by my classmates and by my teachers and by random people that I'd see on the street. And so that was kind of when my disability was most visible. But then when I, and then I kind of was considered normal. I didn't have a lot of restrictions to my life. Um, until I was about 13 and that's when life kind of spiraled out of control and I had another hip surgery I had I lived in a wheelchair for a little while so I've done that kind of thing living in the hospital for an amount of time um and now I'm kind of at that point that I'm some days I have a very visible disability with a lot of splints and braces and stuff keeping me together, plus my service dog. And then some days I feel great. I run to the store without track because some days if you're feeling really good and you just have to run into something, it's easier to go without your service dog because some people are crazy. And so I've kind of done all the things. And I'm surprised because it's not always when my disability is most visible when people come up to me and say, like, the weirdest things. Sometimes all I'll have on are my ring splints and people will come up and compliment me on my rings and I'll say that they're medical splints and that you need a prescription to have them which is kind of my baseline, what I always tell people, and they'll just, like, start crying. And I'm like, all I have on right now are, like, pretty ring splints. Like, what would you do if I was, like, more visibly disabled? But anyways, people are crazy. Check that one off the list. Um, so yeah, now that I've gotten on a tangent... Um, it's kind of weird because sometimes I'm totally objectified as a source of inspiration and sometimes people don't even know that I have a disability and it's kind of, it's kind of weird to sometimes have to go out and expect people to be crazy 
and sometimes you go out and people aren't. I don't know where this is going. I'm sorry, this is going to be a ramble. I guess I've gotten picked for awards and things just because of my disability. Like I said last vlog with the crazy Tinder guy, like I've had people crying over me and because of my disability, like bawling, which is so stupid. Um, I'm just a normal person. Like I don't do anything exceptional. I just live my life and sometimes I don't even do that good of a job. Like I'm, yeah, you guys know the story. So it's really odd to go and get objectified in that way, especially when I look more abled. I'm not saying that people that do not look as abled should be objectified. Like that's, no, we should, I hate inspiration, both people and people that cry over you. But I just don't understand at the slightest indication that I might not be completely normal, which is a completely arbitrary term, that people just freak the crap out, you know? Like, why can't I just be a normal person that goes to the Target, gets my life done, gets some milk, and leaves? Why do I have to be this, this thing? On one hand, it's very nice not to have people coming up and crying over you or like offering to pray over you or, you know, wanting some kind of inspirational story out of you. And then on one hand, when I'm out at the store and I don't look very visibly disabled and I need help, and nobody will help me because they don't think that I look like the model for somebody that is disabled and would need help. And so on one hand, when I, when I was younger, when I went out to the store, I used to put on all my splints and all my things just so that I knew if something went wrong, people would probably help me. Which is so s Anyways. Or I knew if I wanted to be treated like everyone else, like if I was going to a family function or something, I would do my best to look as normal as possible so that I could blend completely into the background and nobody would notice me at all because I didn't want to be that source of, like, that person in the family that's, like, the the one, you know? You know what I mean. The one in the family. And so, it's just this, it's very odd living as a person with a semi-invisible illness and the weird tight rope that you have to walk between being too disabled and not disabled enough. And I don't think that I should feel the need to prove my disability or hide my disability. It's really hard. I think what it comes down to is just loving ourselves in a way that whatever the stupid people say, it doesn't matter. But that doesn't mean that it's easy, you know? If you are able-bodied, don't um, automatically assume that others are able-bodied and don't automatically assume that people that are disabled need help or are inspirational, like, I hate the whole inspirational thing. I don't know if I hate it so much because in high school, 
in middle school. Since I was five, I was a competitive swimmer. I pretty much like got that cast off and was like, I'm going to go swim. And I was always that kid on the team that was expected to do, like I wasn't, no, nobody expected anything from me. Nobody was going to push me harder because it was like, oh, she, she has a disability. She might break. She might, you know, die. I don't know. And it was hard because I wanted to be pushed. I wanted to work harder. I wanted to swim faster. But where other people had help doing that, it seemed like everybody was like, oh, maybe you should slow down. Oh, maybe you shouldn't do this because it's kind of harder. Or maybe, and I was always like, no. I'm going to work just as hard as every single person on this team harder than some people probably harder than most people because I want to do as well as other people I want to be as normal as I can as normal as abled as I can I don't want to have my disability holding me back but it was always like I was there to inspire the rest of the team I wasn't there to participate in the team and I'm not saying that I was bad I swam varsity all four years of high school all three years of high school I couldn't swim my senior year um like I was good but it was never I was never viewed as one of the good swimmers I was just viewed as like this person that was supposed to be there to inspire the rest of the people and so maybe that's why I hate the word so much now but, yeah, it's a weird, it's a weird life we live. <laughs> so, yeah, that's where I'm at. That's what you get today. Hope you had a good Thanksgiving. Trek says goodbye. If you can't see him. Here. Trekkie says goodbye. <laughs> Here. There we go. Cute puppy. He's like, stop shining the light in my face. You're so mean. Have a good day. Love you all.